Howdy, folks, and welcome to a Saturday night paint and chat. Uh, it is I, not Jay, and I've got painting to do. So I figured, you know, hey, why not uh, hang out with uh, some folks and get some painting done? I've extended invitations out to uh, McMurray and, and the regular group, and uh, we'll see if they want to join in. If not, that's okay. Um, I still got to get this painting done, and, you know, I got at least two of you guys watching. Hey, how you doing, Telemachus and uh, Nordic? Uh, did you get that email I sent? I hope. Oh, hey, Panther Shadow's here as well. All right. Um, Telemachus says... Greetings, prophylactic users. Clear coat your miniatures. There you go. Um, Nordic Maelstrom, hello, friends. Uh, Panther Shadow, hi, all. And then Nordic says, I have 72 15 millimeter Polish early war infantry if you want to paint them too, Chris. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I, I, I got plenty of work to do, my friend. Plenty of work to do. Uh, Charles coming in. Hi, hi, how you doing, uh, Charles? Glad you could show up. Uh, I've also got uh, Tomicus just got home, home in time. Uh, Says I did get that email and I downloaded the items. Thank you. Where did you find the top down counters of the ships or did you make the graphics? Well, so uh, what I did was I've got a PDF of the ship recognition manual from 1942-43, I think it is, uh, published by the ONI, uh, Organiz uh, Organization of Naval Intelligence. Uh, it's obviously been declassified since it's, shit, 82 years old at this point. Um, and since it is a... Uh, a government, a U.S. government document, it is, there's no copyright on it. So I just took the top-down views from those, uh, from that document, cleaned them up, um, and dropped them into uh, my Pages software on my Mac, and uh, colored bluer in around, boom, Bob's your uncle. That, those are actually, if you print them full size, they're actually 12400 scale, um, which is what I started off with. Uh, and on the, the ship information charts uh, that you have on each ship, uh, those uh, those boxes, or the, the damage box uh, with each ship, they're in 12400 scale there also. So there you go. Uh, welcome back to games. Chris Long is in the house. How you doing, Chris? Um, he says, hey -o. And then Nordic says, evening, Chuck. Uh, you behaving yourself tonight? Yes, sort of. Uh, I did a few turns in uh, Great Battles of Alexander that's on the table. Very nice. Uh, Gamers with Coffee Ashley is here saying, hey, guys. How you doing? Um. And hold on one second, Ashley. Let's see. Let's do this. Where are y'all? I'm sending the link to Greg uh, if he is around, Ashley. Uh, Nordic says, is that PDF document free or do you need to pay for it? I honestly don't know where I got it from. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest. Um, I think I bought it on a, a DVD, God, 15 years ago. Uh, it's just banging around on my, been banging around on computer after computer after computer. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Um, let me bring it up. And I'll show you what it looks like. I can share my screen. Um, do, 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 All right.
I have to duck under my camera to, to see everything. All right, so let me go ahead and present. Share screen. Select the window. Oh, there we go. Allow. All right, so this is what I am what I've, what I have. It's, um, from the war department, FM 30 dash 50 Navy department, NAV AER 00 dash 80 V as in Victor dash five, seven. Um, regional recognition, pictorial manual of Naval vessels supplement number one. Um, it's actually from September of 43, as we see here. And um, so, yeah, it gives a brief understanding of the different parts of ships, um, the different uh, U.S. Uh, designation for different ships, BB for battleship, CB for large cruiser, etc. cetera. Um, and then it gets into simplified silhouettes. And then it gets into the ships themselves, uh, starting off with Iowa. Um, at that time in 1943, there was only the Iowa, uh, in the Iowa class. Uh, Missouri, New Jersey, and Wisconsin had not yet been uh, uh, completed and launched. Um, then we've got your South Dakotas. So what I did is I, I, I captured that image there and then uh, cleaned it up and, you know, made it good to go. So uh, like I said, if you're looking for it, it is uh, the War Department Field Manual 30-50 from 1943. Uh, let's see here. Norg wants to know what games did uh, Chuck get? I already punched France 40 and clipping it. Fred the Enchanted is here. Hi, Fred. How you doing? Um, it's nearly a full house. Yeah, it is. It's We got just about everybody except, you know, on the video side. But that's okay. I mean, I literally just said, all right, just got home, finished eating dinner and said, I need to get this up and running. I didn't do it earlier. Uh, I didn't get it set up earlier because I didn't know when I was going to get home and get finished uh, eating. So that's, that's why. Uh, I, I, I will be honest. I don't know, Fred. I don't know uh, if I know Josh poor or not. Um, I, 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 if I do, I don't know him as Josh Poor. So let's put it that way. Uh, Charles got France 40, Rebel Fury, and Storm of Steel from Compass. Outstanding, brother. Uh, let me know. Okay, good, good. Uh, we just got home. Give us a few minutes. Stop. Take your time, Ashley. We're going to be here for a while because I've got to get these ships done. I'm just banging through these here real quickly. What other games from Simonich's 4X games do you have, Chuck? Um, I've got um, – who do I got? I've got Salerno 43 and Normandy 44, both of which I've enjoyed immensely. Um, these three millimeter minis are addictive. Yes. Yes, they are. Um, that's from Walkabout. Hello, everyone, says Richard. And Charles has all of them. Uh, there is a, a NA. Mike, how you doing, buddy? Greetings, everyone. Norik says I've been on the I I've been on an Iowa class battleship. I would like to visit. That's that's one of my bucket list goals is to get onto all of the museum ships that are in the United States. That would make the uh, five carriers, which are, if I remember correctly. I've been on Lexington down in Corpus, but you also have Midway in San Diego. You've got um, 
Yorktown, I think in South Carolina, Intrepid up in New York City, uh, and uh, one other, I can't remember her name. Then you've got Texas, which I've been on, uh, North Carolina, which I've been on, uh, Massachusetts, Alabama, and then the four Iowas, uh, Iowa, New Jersey, uh, Missouri, and Wisconsin. I've also been to the South Dakota uh, USS South Dakota Memorial, which is in South Dakota, right off of I-29, as it drives along the eastern border there. And uh, what they've done there is they've got one of the guns from South Dakota, one of the 16-inch guns, one of the five. I think they've got one of the. They don't have a five-inch shirt. They have a five. One of the five-inch guns there, and then uh, they've got a concrete wall about oh a foot to 18, 18 inches tall that outlines the gunnels of the ship and then concrete rings that are representative of the bar bits for the main guns. And then a building, a small uh, building uh, for a visitor center where the superstructure would be. It's kind of cool. Uh, Nordic says, you want to feel insignificant, just go stand on the bridge of an Iowa-class battleship. The guns are huge, yes. They are gargantuan. Uh, 16 inches in diameter, 50 diameters long. Yeah, they're they're crazy. Charles says, except the, in a, oh, okay, uh, the North Africa 40 expansion. Okay. <clears throat> I found the PDF for that for free. Oh, outstanding, Nordic. Good, good for you. Uh, I got France 40, North Africa 41, Salerno 43, Normandy 44, and just purchased Stalingrad 42 from Wardrobe. Uh, I've based a British infantry brigade so far. Very cool. Uh, I've been on board the battleship New Jersey a few times, including standing on the bridge. Oh, cool. Charles says, soon. I've toured Massachusetts, Yorktown, Intrepid, and Nautilus. I've also been on a a submarine and a destroyer escort in Galveston. There, it's, it's Seawolf Park, which is not near, it's near, relatively speaking, because it's in Galveston, but it's not near where Texas is ultimately going to end up. I just ordered 17 pounds of Braunschweiger. Does that make me weird? Um, only if you're going to eat it all at once. That would be weird. But if you like Braunschweiger, go for it, man. Um, soon Atlantic Sentinels from Compass and Gettysburg from Worthington. Ooh. I heard, uh, got to let me know how Atlantic Sentinel, Sentinel, Sentinels, Jesus, Sentinels uh, plays out for you, Charles. That looks pretty cool. Uh, Mike, it doesn't make you weird at all. Um, depends on what you're doing with all that meat. Agreed. Agreed. So let me let me go ahead and get rid of this for us for now. All right. So what I'm working on right now is I am going to paint up uh, HMS Barham. Uh, and then the other um, Queen Elizabeth uh, battleship that was at uh, Battle of Cape Matapan. Uh, and I can't remember. I've got. I finished War Spite on Wednesday. I say I finished her. I think I'm going to change her deck color. It's a little too yellow for my tastes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that light brown that I used, and I'm thinking of. <coughs> excuse me. Adding. Um, adding a touch of. I think maybe earth to kind of darken it up a little. Uh, so uh, Nordic, I uh, the 3D, uh, well, you don't have a 3D printer yet, but I got them from uh, Gukek um, from Wargaming 3D or 3D, 3D Wargaming or something like that. Um, 
pretty good deal on them. Uh, ah, crud. Got to shake it up. Um, I mean, these, this STL was, I think, three or four bucks. Uh, the STL for the illustrious here. Uh, that was three or four bucks. The destroyers are like two or three bucks a piece. The cruisers are three to four bucks a piece. So uh, not too bad. If you buy over a certain amount, like over $50 at one time, he's got a 5% discount. If you buy over $100, it's a, a 10% discount. So, um, ooh, that needs to... It needs to be shake, shaken up also. So, yeah, it's... And they make pretty good... You know, they print out pretty well. Like I said, they are designed to be printed in uh, 1800 scale. Uh, and he actually prints them on an FDM printer. Uh, obviously, I've got these going at one six thousand or one three thousand here. Um, and then even the one six thousand stuff looks really quite nice. Um, let's see if I've got one of my th one three thousand ships handy or one six thousand ships that I've painted up handy. And I don't seem to have one on hand. I really need to clean my desk. It's it's quite unnerving um, how un ungood my uh, my desk is. It's 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 ridiculous. Anyway, um, I'd like to find someone who makes warships for the classical antiquity period. It would be fun to play some naval games in that area using the war galley rules. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, and then get an email and supposedly my 15 millimeter orcs from irregular miniatures has gone into the mail. Outstanding, Charles. You should have that in the not too distant future. So, which is always, always good. All right. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, that, I don't think that's the color I'm looking for. No, that's not it at all, I don't think. Um, maybe let's go ahead and let's slap it down onto the slap it down and see what see what happens so I hope everybody's uh, week finished off nicely um, things are going pretty well around here um, all things you know considered Like I said, we got uh, March to Victory coming up next week. Um, so we'll have one more show. Uh, don't think that's really the color I'm wanting to go with or go for. In fact, it's not much different than the color I already got. I think I want to go a little lighter. Let, let's add a little bit of ivory to it. Um, Charles says, I'm so far behind in everything. And should I paint some miniatures or continue clipping frames for you? Well, it depends. How close are you being done to uh, being finished with frames 40? Um, and keeping in mind that it is a paint and chat, not a clip and chat. Just saying. But you do you, brother. Um, St. Patty's Day here, green pancakes for brekkie. So I found out something that tomorrow is not just St. Patrick's Day. It is also, I believe, she was St. Gertrude. Um, she's the patron saint of cats and cat lovers. So I 
being that I am a cat lover, being that I have six of the little devils living with me, um, I think we're going to go with uh, celebrating. I think that might be it. Uh, we're going to go with celebrating St. Gertrude's Day. At least I am. I'm still going to have corned beef and cabbage and and uh, Irish soda bread. But I think we're going to go. I'm going to go with St. Gertrude. Um, Nordic says it could go for a good Irish whiskey on the rocks right now. I, you know what? I'm... I know very few Irish whiskeys. Um, I know Bushmills. And that might be it off the top of my brain. Why don't these look the way they... Uh, you ever notice that when you start painting, the color you have in your palette does not end up looking like the color you have on the model. Because again, that well, yeah, it's not. Give it some more ivory. Um, I ordered the four by five drop cloth to make my Singapore map for campaign. Oh, nice, very good. Uh, you make a good point. Okay, painting it is. I shall be back in a couple of minutes. Need to get my paints and stuff in here. Outstanding, Nordic. Um, so I was looking, not really looking, I was thinking about what, uh, what gaming I've got coming up. Obviously we've got March to victory this coming weekend, a week from tonight, uh, we'll be wrapping up. And then I've got nothing game-wise in April, which is a good thing because I'm doing a lot of traveling for a lot of memorial services, unfortunately. Um, a lot. Uh, th three of the four weekends, uh, Donna and I are traveling uh, to different memorial services. So... Um, not not great, but uh, rolling around uh, May, we've got um, we've got uh, May May the fourth game day uh, at Wiley HQ. There we go. I think that's it. Yeah, finally got enough ivory into it. Um. And it's going to be, you know, all things Star Wars game related. Uh, then in June, uh, the second weekend of June is going to be J3, my brother's game weekend. July, we're back in uh, Independence for Battles and Brews. August and September, we don't have anything going on. I think it's going to be the last weekend of October. Um, or thereabouts, uh, whatever weekend is close to Halloween, uh, we'll have the Great Revenant Hunt uh, at uh, Wiley HQ again. And then in November or early December, we're going to have uh, another game day at Wiley, at Wiley HQ with uh, the Wiley Wargaming Weekend. So, except for... August and September, and obviously April, I've, I've got at least one game day or game weekend per month right now. So that's that's pretty nice. Um, and then we roll into the new year, next year, uh, and it looks like um, I'm... I, I want to see if I can't get over to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, where they've got Scrooge Con. Uh, the guys that run that 
come down to March to Victory and down to uh, uh, the other Wiley game days. And uh, they are really great guys. So I want to get over and partake in their gaming uh, as well. That happens to fall in January. Um, so it could get dicey weather wise, but uh, I really want to do my best. What probably what we would do or I would do is uh, go uh, like midday Friday, drop Donna off at Liberty to visit the kids, and then I would drive on up. Uh, that uh, Friday afternoon uh, to get up to Lincoln and then uh, game with Bill and the guys Friday night and then all day Saturday drive back down to Liberty to pick Donna up and then drive home. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, she was a patron of gardeners, poor widows, and cats, if I remember correctly. I just know about the cats, man. It's all right. I got my paints and will join you in painting. Outstanding. Way to go, Nordic. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm just sitting here doing my best to get these ships done. Uh, I'm not going to get too much more fancy with them than what I'm doing right now. Um, I will, uh, like I said, on the the destroyers, definitely I'm just going to figure out um, if I need to do a deck color on them or if they are uh, steel decked. And then uh, I'm not worrying about doing any camouflage on them. So... They, they might end up just getting the, the water painted around them and then uh, getting their uh, name tag placed on them uh, after I do a wash. Because, well, you know. Um, let's see here. All right. But the battleships I'm going to do a little bit more with. Uh, I just I think the battleships definitely deserve to get their get uh, you know get as much paint on them as possible because they are they are the stars of the show as it were. And if I stop talking for a period of time, it's because I'm really concentrating on a particular area. So it's not like I'm ignoring you guys. I know you guys are there. Um, normally, it wouldn't be so bad if, you know, we did have, uh, if I did have some of my co-hosts. But, you know, again, that's okay. Um, like I said, I, I did, did decide to get this going pretty late. So, you know, the, they have y'all out there. I, um, I, I appreciate you guys jumping on. I, it, it, it makes me feel good. Um, and it really, really makes me want, you know, y'all being here is what makes me want to continue doing the show, um, for you guys. Uh, it, it makes me feel like I, I provide a, a bit of free entertainment uh, because you know I I'm literally making nothing off of this whatsoever, um, you know. So here I am making uh, you know just just doing my hobby, and you guys actually make it easier for me to do my hobby. Because I hate 
Uh, I hate having to, I, I hate sitting here and painting. I, I despise uh, doing it uh, if I'm by myself. Um, so, you know, having you all here with me helps me get done what I need to get done. Because I love playing the games. I love getting prepared for the games by, you know, coming up with scenarios and whatnot. But as for the painting of the miniatures, eh, not so much. I got to be honest. Um, what is my favorite ship of World War II? And Charles is correct. Yes. Um, USS Texas. She's my baby. Uh, I grew up in Texas. I, I actually have a photo. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Good time to take a break. Um, here we go. Bear with me, guys. Favorites. This is my favorite list. It is not my favorite list. Oh, okay. Well, let's... See if it's in <clears throat> people. Go to dad. <coughs> hmm, not there either. Okay. So we'll do it the hard way. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. No. Like I said, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. We will. Now, my favorite uh, aircraft carrier. Um, I've got. I've got a couple. Uh, I've got uh, USS Midway because my stepdad served on her uh, during Vietnam. Um, it, but I also, uh, my father-in-law served on e, uh, USS Boxer during Korea. So there's that. Um, like I said, I've been on Lexington, uh, which is similar to uh, the ship, well, the two ships that my uncle flew off of during Vietnam, he flew off both Ariskany and Ticonderoga. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my early signs of concentration is my tongue hanging out of my mouth. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I, I get like that too. Um, okay. That's the problem when you have over 15,000 photos and you're looking for one. And unfortunately, it doesn't have any discernible features to look at it. 
Um, me and Ramonica keep drifting off and having bizarre dreams, falling right into the REM sleep because I am sleep deprived. I need to go make a sandwich. Or, like Nordic says, you could go to bed. I mean, I, I, I appreciate that uh, you're here, you know, hanging out with us, buddy. But, man, if you got to go to sleep, go to sleep. Um, what this picture is of is me and my dad and my brother. Oh, I know where I can find it. Hold on, guys. Hold on. go here I can find it I should be able to find it a lot quicker here photos so I don't have as many photos here as I do there there we are okay I'm going to share this photo Present, go to share screen, go to Facebook, allow. There we go. So here I am. Uh, as if you can read the caption here, so the picture I found while cleaning my office. Uh, this was taken around late 1974, early 75, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is my dad. This is me. We tyke probably four-ish. Uh, probably not quite five. And this right here is the head of my brother. Uh, he's in uh, a, a backpack carrier a la Yoda that dad's carrying me. And, of course, this is standing in front of USS Texas. This is the first time I saw a, you know, a World War II vessel. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it, 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 it had me enthralled right off. And, you know, I grew up in San Antonio. Uh, she was in, uh, she's, at the time, she was uh, at the San Jacinto Battleground. Uh, so, yeah. Um and of course, I've got uh, a model of USS Texas in one twelve hundredth scale. A little worse for wear. She's 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 traveled quite a bit. I've had her. Oh man, almost thirty years. Um, I also have her in uh, one three thousand scale. I've got her in one seven hundred scale. Um, and actually, this this model here was given to me by uh, E four Airmen, uh, one of our one of the viewers. Um, so. Uh, I need to finish her. I need to get her painted. Uh, I'm going to paint her up the same way that they've got her painted now um, after her, her refit. We've also got her in 124th scale. Um, I'll probably print her in 118th scale. You know, I've got her one six thousand scale somewhere around in here. So, yeah, there you go. Um Let's see. Uh, Charles says, Chris, your hobby is our hobby. We like what you do. If we like that, if we like that, you tolerate us and it's uh, all good fun. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Uh, I need a bigger Texas, much bigger. Well, the thing is, I don't got room for a bigger Texas. I mean, I could wipe out everything off the top of this desk and put like a I guess maybe a one two hundred scale 
That thing would be massive, though. Jesus. That'd be huge. Um, uh, Nordic says, I'm new to uh, Chris's channel. Trek Trek is a nice ship. Have you built a model of it? Well, yeah. That one right there. Um, I'm off and on working on a 1700 Flyhawk Deluxe Sean Horse. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, some of the Japanese carriers are pretty cool. Uh, it is just, yeah, it's just now 7 o'clock. What are you doing on the West Coast, Mike? I thought you were, like, Ohio or some shit. Uh, yeah, that was me without a mustache. I was... I've had this sucker since I was like, well, after I, uh, after I, well, since 1990, yeah, 1990, um, I went to, I, I went from Kansas City to San Antonio to uh, MEPS, the MEPS there, uh, to get sent off to Fort Gordon for AIT. I'd been to Fort Polk the summer before for basic where I injured my back. And uh, then they uh, realized, oh, hey, you, your back is crappy. We don't want you anymore. So they discharged me. And in doing such, um, They, uh, that was only after, uh, um, after I got all the way through basic training and went to drill for several months and then back to, back to, uh, MEPS. And they said, well, looks like you haven't gotten any better. So we're going to get rid of you. Long story short. So they got rid of me, um, in August of 90, um, just before uh, my particular unit, uh, the 136th sig or 149th Signal Battalion uh, out of San Antonio got called up to backfill um, the communication, uh, the, the Camos uh, unit out of uh, Fort Gordon that had been deployed with the... 24th, 25th. Um, and hey, I'm not alone anymore. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you, Chris? Doing well. Doing Thank well. you for having us on. We had to get our oh, router that's reset cool. and call it. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. No, it's it's all good. I've, I've been, hey, I actually have been doing pretty good for the last 43 minutes. Damn, cool. Yeah. Um, telling people about my likes, my dislikes, my military or lack thereof history. Um, but yeah, after I, after I got back in June of 90, I started growing this thing and I've only had it off twice since June of 1990. Uh, both times I was trimming it with a, with electric clippers and sneezed. Uh oh, Gang. <laughs> so, it was either trim it down to look like Charlie Chaplin or that other guy, or shave it all off and start from scratch. So, shave it off and start from scratch it was. No. Um, Charles says, I need something two foot long. I build it in, uh, in metal and weld it or permanently glued to the hood of your vehicle. If I have something that big on the hood of my vehicle, it will look bigger than my vehicle. I have a nineteen or a two thousand ten Hyundai Accent. That's yeah. All right. So what are y'all guys working on? Well, Ashley is what's this nineteen thirty five? Mm -hmm. Ashley picked up a nineteen thirty five Cadillac fifteen millimeter. Oh, nice. Very Jeez. nice. 
getting ready to, to paint that up. Just something she saw when we ordered. What was it from a miniatures company? It's a miniature tank company. Yeah, miniature tank company where we got some oil pumps for our our tanks. But she's seen this, and so she I got it added. built, and and she's over here mixing up some paint to paint it. So that'll be kind of cool. Uh, we're just getting ready for next week, man. We got everything secured, our tickets and hotel room and rental car and all Good. that fun stuff. Outstanding. Yeah. So we'll Outstanding. make sure. Um, let's see. You know, I'm working on my 15 millimeter Polish infantry for 39. Do you have any of those little uh, crazy tankettes? Because that'd be cool, Nordic. Okay. <clears throat> so Keegan will be out there too, Chris. Oh, cool. Yeah, he got finally got the tickets and got their stuff up and ready to go too. Good, good. Glad to hear that. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, of course, we've got, um, I'll be out there. Um, McMurray will be there. Uh, we're even going to have uh, a Todd sighting. Uh, get, oh, uh, Todd's going again, too? Cool. Yeah, Todd will be out there. Uh, Reese is, of course, going to be there. Um, so, yeah, it's looks like it's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm curious to see the new new venue. Ashley couldn't make it the last two times. And I'm like, well, now it's something completely different. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's okay. No, that's okay. I'm not complaining. It sounds like it's walking distance to food for, so it's all good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're going to have the same opportunity of having the, uh, the, uh, the catering like we did before. Um, but um, <clears throat> we are going to have we are going to be in close proximity to uh, we are going to be in close proximity to like, I think 11 different restaurants. So yeah, we got that going for us, which is nice. That's cool. Yeah. Um. I'm uh, like I said, I'm I'm painting up uh, HMS Barham right now, and uh, getting her ready to go, and then I will be painting up the other. Uh, I got War Spite painted. I got Barham, and I got one more. I, uh, I can't remember her name, uh, but uh, yeah, I'll have those painted, and then I'm going to kick over to my uh, to the Italians because I need to get uh, Vittorio Veneto painted up uh, for uh, for this. Uh, and she's going to be, uh, I got to, I got to do the candy stripe on her. So, uh, yeah, Panther Shadow, the miniature tanks company has a good range and good prices. I, I like some of their stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, I got a van. Oh yeah. So check this out, Chris, from the miniature tank company and meandering Mike. See, she's got the Scooby-Doo van. Oh, Nice. And so she's going to paint it up as, well, I mean, it's the same type. So she's going to make it. I'm going to paint it like for the Scooby-Doo. Yeah, make it. Oh, it yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, what's the A7, I think? This little World War One tank we got. Oh, outstanding, right yeah. The big it's German. The A7, I can't remember. A7V. Yeah. But imagine seeing this beast on World nope. War One coming coming down the field nope. at you. So yeah, I so, like uh, I like some of their stuff. It's cool. Um, I printed then, up. I, I printed this up. Uh, it's a uh, one uh, three hundred scale. Oh, 
That looks like RV from The Walking Dead. Nope, it is the EM50 oh, from, from Stripes. Uh, Stripes. Stripes, yeah. I've got it both in Weapons Deployed and Covert. Oh, damn. That's cool. Yeah. That was a that was a funny movie. That was a oh yeah, I love that movie. Laugh and stuff, yeah. Um, what's that? The uh, one where they wrestle in the mud and get their asses handed to them. Yeah, they're all screw ups. Yeah, oh, yeah. They, they were all oh, screw ups. They saved the day. Yeah. Okay. Why of all the scenes out of that, that's when I remember. Where you been, soldier? Training, sir. <laughs> what type of training? <laughs> Army training, sir. Um, what type of sandwich did uh, me and Mike have? Well, it looks like he took leftover pad thai with Thai curry to coconut chicken, uh, put it in a hoagie roll, then topped it with melted cheese. What type of cheese, man? You can't just leave us like that. You can't just say melted cheese. Yeah. Actually, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I we got home um, and uh, we had to run to Jacksonville, which is about 45 minutes from here after I got finished uh, uh, replacing a battery on an iPhone 8 Plus for a customer. And uh, got home and I cooked up a couple of hamburgers and had some fries in the, in the uh, uh, what do you call that thing? The air fryer. That's what we had for dinner. No big deal. Uh, Mexican blend shredded cheese. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I remember the spatula scene from Stripes. There you go. There you go. Uh, do I have a Sergeant Hulk miniature to go with that vehicle? You know what? Um, I need to. I need to get one. Um, it, the thing is, at that scale, though, I mean, I can just use any infantry dude and call it Sergeant Hulk if I wanted to. So. Uh, now, that being said, I would love to find somebody that makes, either has sculpted them and has made them in lead, or makes STL of all of the, all of the guys from, uh, from that movie. That, that would be great. I need to get a hold of Forrest. I need to get a hold of Forrest. To see if he, that's something he could do uh, for us over at Knuckle Duster Games. Huh. That would be cool if you could swing that. Yeah, I need I need to bring that up to him, man, because that that's just yeah. That would be amazingly great. Um, so. Um, so y'all are bringing uh, Zombicide, right? Yep. We, we thought also, uh, it might be right? good given the change we got that you guys got that gaming shop with the table, and it's an easy game and for people to pick up. So yeah, that would be cool. To yeah, sit that, and, join. That would... and we got tons of miniatures. It's not complicated, so I thought let's let's try that. Yeah, that that I think that's going to work out real well. Um, Zombicide's a fun game anyway. Uh, it's not going to be one that I'm going to go out and buy personally, um, just because I'm not I'm not into. I, I've I've never understood the the whole, hey, I'm gonna, you know, I, the whole zombie yeah. genre thing. Um, yeah. It's more I'll like play the, it. the gameplay for me. Um, yeah. And then of course the grandkids like it and everybody else likes it. So and then there's Brian, you know, he's oh, yeah. like a he's like a plastic crack dealer. Yes, he is. Yes. So I'm I, don't like, I, like, I can't afford to I can't afford that. And then next thing I know on my phone, bing. Greg, look, here's a place oh, like and half off. Jeff he's not much better. Oh Jeff. No, Jeff sells me cardboard. Uh yeah. And Brian sells me plastic. But I already had a plastic addiction, so really he just capitalized on it. But 
<laughs> as as any good capitalist would do. Uh, of course. How you doing, McMurray? Oh, just another day in paradise, man. Did you get a good hotel this time, McMurray? Uh, yeah. Actually, I mean, yeah, but yes, I did, but also I kind of didn't. Todd just sent me a link to, hey, I have a couch. Here's the address. Oh, geez. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, a far better far better hotel than last time. Well, the last two times. Hell, I think it was either last March to Victory or last uh, Battles and Brews. I think it was March to Victory because I had I had bought stuff. And I was hanging out with, I was talking to Todd on Facebook Messenger, looking at the stuff I had grabbed. And uh, somebody got shot in the parking lot of the hotel. That yeah, shit that's... stays in in Independence. Uh, that's when you got that hotel. We had that one. It was terrible. I mean, like I said, the carpet was. But at least I have stories, man. But I think they just pulled the body out of there before they didn't even clean the place and give it to us. Yeah. The, the, on doors. Yeah. The first, the first year I stayed in that thing, I counted 37 cigarette burns in the uh. comforter. Um, that place is very truly just a roof, because I I brought I brought a cot and a sleeping bag, and I set up a cot and sleeping bag in that room, so I didn't trust the bed. <laughs> you want know bed bugs? Yeah. That place was gnarly, man. I know we we had an adventure. This last this one here though is a completely different one in a different area, and I checked a little more as opposed to. Because it looked great, the pictures looked great, but then you get there and I say, oh my God, they haven't cleaned this place. And you open the door and it had a little kitchenette, but the stove had rust on it, rusted areas. And you're like, I, you couldn't cook on that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I always wind up staying east of like March to Victory and I need to stay. All right, sorry. I always wind up staying west of March to Victory, like closer yeah. in towards Kansas City. That, 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 that's a mistake. Yeah, well, yeah, but that's where all the hotels are. I need to just look for small, shitty hotels on the side of 70 where at least I know, you know, I don't know. Ours is in Lee Summit. Yeah, so we got to yeah. drive about 20, 25 minutes. But no, nah, that's nothing. I, 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 uh, graduated Lee, I graduated Lee Summit High School. I lived in Lee Summit for about 10 years. It's 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 not bad. What what? Which hotel? Well, kind of, except the you drive at Lee Summit the and you still had to ride your horse to school. Yeah, so uh, the Comfort Inn, if I remember correctly, is like Caddy right. Wampus across uh, US 50 from the high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's not a bad area then. No, no, not at all. I mean, you're you're literally you step outside the comfort. If I remember correctly, you step outside from the comfort inn and you see the highway patrol headquarters. Yeah, for right. that for that district. I want to say to be honest with you, even yeah. staying in like Warrensburg in the Dirty Burg wouldn't be too far off. And it's just it's a college town with sleepy little college town hotels. Yeah. Well, I did some research. Uh, it has a whole lot of compliments and about the staff yeah. and the cleanliness and lots and lots and lots of good reviews. And it costs it, yeah, more than some good, of the others, but it it's it's a good uh, it's a good hotel. Um, and really, there's not too. I mean, yeah, things have probably changed since I lived there last. And in... well, yeah, we won the Civil War. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> where's that? Where's that? Um, they don't have to worry. Yeah, I mean. I mean, you're not too far from uh, Lone Jack, where the Battle of Lone Jack occurred. Yeah, I mean, or Westport. I mean, they're all right over there. Yeah, we gotta uh, check that no, out. You'll, we're out there. you'll you'll just shoot straight up 291 to get to uh, get to Game Cafe in Independence. I mean, it's it, yeah, it's like a 20 minute drive. It's it ain't nothing. Yeah, I looked at the map. I told Ash, I said, I'm just guessing, but 20, 25 minutes, roughly. Yeah. That's it's, okay. It's because, yeah, and it, it costs more than the other one, but I'm like, at least we don't have, it doesn't look like, you know, a flop so, house. Or, yeah, so the, the, the one that you stayed in, the, this one, you're not going to have roaches pull a knife on you. <laughs> Like Joe's apartment. That I'm pretty sure yeah. the Roach was the nicest guest other than me at the hotel I was at last time. It, it, that could have been. I mean, not not going to say, you know, 
horrible things. Um, I mean, I'll say some bad things. I don't tell you shit all. Yeah, I don't in a bad Kansas review. City, do not stay at the Days in Win or Days in Independence. <laughs> like, I like the bad review. Yeah, I'll be real honest with you. That hotel sucks. Could be worse. Not quite sure how, yeah. but it could be worse. Yeah, I mean, I could have got shot, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it could have been thirty-nine cigarette burns in you. Yeah, I'm just grateful I didn't catch anything from walking on the carpet. So <laughs> <laughs> that was the other thing. Yeah, I think it was Brian's. Like, are you are you walking around in there on your bare feet? Hell no. No, put slippers on, man. Hell no. I wore sandals in the shower of that damn hotel. <laughs> I used my own uh, my own towel. But anyways. It gave us stories, right? McMurray, we got stories. Exactly. Exactly. But I am really excited. Chris, what you painting on? Um, I I just uh, finished um Barian. Nice. I uh, gotta get the gotta get her uh the blue on there and I'm uh kick on Valiant. Okay. There you go. Um, so you're working on the Queen Elizabeths? Yeah, yeah. Because I got War Spite finished on uh I got War Spite finished on uh Wednesday. Okay. So need to do some touch ups on her. But that's okay. I got uh, my Man, I tell you what, coming up with orders of battle and command structures for my game, my my uh, Civil War game has been a thing. Um, so, I mean, obviously at Gettysburg, there's plenty of information. Two weeks post Gettysburg, though, well, that shit's hard to find, man. <laughs> like, yeah, you can pull casualty figures. And, like, strengths nominally from, you know, Gettysburg stuff. But the command is rough. Because out of Heath's division, Heath got hit at Gettysburg. But I can confirm that he was in command at Falling Waters on the 14th. Because he got hit in the head, but his head, his hat was stuffed up with papers. And so it took his hat off and didn't really hurt him. He was back in command two weeks later. That oh, there you said, go. Brock and Bro, no. Well, see, Brock and Bro, he didn't get wounded at Gettysburg. His brother died at Gettysburg, which means that then I think it's Fields took over his brigade at Gettysburg. But he sh he was back in command by Falling Waters, but he acted like an asshole. So then they booted him back down to regimental command of the 40th Virginia and put Fields back up in charge of his brigade. But then, let's see here, Pettigrew was in command at Falling Waters because he was actually mortally wounded at Falling Waters and died three days later. Uh, Archer, Archer was captured at Gettysburg. I'm sorry, Davis was captured at Gettysburg, as was his executive officer, Fry. So I got to put, uh, it, it's, it's a whole thing, man. It's fun. You got this. I do. Luckily, Slope was 12th core. That shit's easy. That's that's not bad. And I already have all the... The figures are all done, so I'm using my figures that I used at Wiley War Games Weekend, plus right. Jay's figures, plus my buddy Corey's figures. So there's going to be a lot of... There's going to be a lot of troops on that field. Um, that was candy. Probably, the better part of 1,000, 15 millimeter troops on that field. Oh, nice. nice. Um, that's that's going to look awesome. amazing, man. Yeah, I mean, so the, the Union have, I think, 161 infantry stands. Let's see. I got it written down over here. Now, oh, sorry, you're, you're not seeing un unpainted miniatures. No, they will all be painted. <laughs> I will pull a Brian on everyone. So, yeah, the Union have 161 infantry stands. The Confederacy will have 
Uh, let's see. 23 plus 33 is 56. 66. 67. 68. 81. Infantry stands. Cool. So I take that Pretty back. Cool. It'll be 800 or so. 15 millimeters. Oh, <laughs> I, then I don't want anything to do with it. If it's not a thousand, fuck it. Well, all right, cool. So Chris isn't playing. We got five, <laughs> we got four spots open. Uh, but yeah, it'll well, be unfortunately. Uh, now, now this is this is a new. This one ha hasn't been posted onto the website, has it? It is not, <clears throat> um, mainly because I didn't want to commit to it until I had all the figures hammered out. Right. And I needed parts of all three of those collections to total up, especially that 161 Union stands. Right, right, right. Because that's kind of a shitload of figures. It is. Um, but I now know that I will have all of those figures. Um, I think Corey and I are going to play a part of this game on um, Tuesday. Cool. And then, um, I mean, the, the game itself is live free or die, so that's not hard. That's a very, very simple, easy to play, easy to understand rule set. Um, I think, did we play 2mm ACW at J3 maybe? I don't think we did. No. I've played with a number of folks. Je that's, so that's what I use to play through. If anybody runs over to Jeff's channel and watches the games that I played for Joy of Wargaming's Sneedville campaign, those were played with two millimeter irregular figures using a Civil War adaptation of Live Free or Die. Okay, uh, cool. Wow. Which, which is an ACW rule set by uh, Little Wars TV, those guys. Which, fun fact, is also what I'll be using my all the 15 millimeter French and Indian stuff that I'm painting up for Axe Annex's challenge. Because painting challenges, apparently, um, are just some shit that Brian and I can't do without. So, um, we're both in this two month long. Axe and Axe. Uh, you can go over and check his YouTube channel out. He's got a couple videos talking about it. But he's doing a 15 millimeter rank and flank challenge where you choose a 15 millimeter rank and flank army and try and paint it in March and April. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so far I've got uh, 80 French regulars and some. Well, it's, I think it's 60 French regulars, 70 with their command, three or four other mounted command figures, and then like a dozen artillery men as well that are done. They just need to be based. I always told myself I'd never paint stuff with facings, and here I am. It's good for you. Right. It is. It builds character. I agree with you, Greg. But again, yeah, the nice the thing one. is that should that should put a decent number of figures onto the table. I'm basing them up for Fire and Fury, just that basing system. So I found that it's pretty robust, right? So like, when is when is your game, McMurray? When when is it scheduled out there? Or do I don't know that it's. I don't think it's got a scheduled time. I think it's one of the. Here we are, slash, whenever there aren't many games scheduled, here comes uh, here comes McMurray's game. Right. Pardon the noise, folks. Um, it's, it's cooking day. Um, but, yeah, so I've got, like I said, I don't know if I actually have a set time for this one. On the other one, my Martian game, I did sign up for a time – because you have to in order to set the, send the form in. But it also yeah, unfortunately, is... unfortunately, that is the same time I'm running my... Uh, I'm running... Um, water Tanker. Uh, Friday after... Friday evening. Oh, yeah, that's fine, though. I like, like you said, there, it's always super-duper doable to just swap stuff around and change up. It's not... 
nobody's going to go nuts so if we do that. Yeah. Um, um, but, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a great time. I don't think anybody's expecting anything different. Um, no, no, not at all. It's, it's not it's, even that. I mean, not even that Reed boy, and he will be in attendance, <laughs> which will be outstanding. Yeah, the, 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 the Reed boy will be there. Um, I think he, not I don't think he has missed a march to victory, actually. No, no, he has made it to all, all well, the two so far, and then this will be number three for him. Um, yeah, because he, he helped me out last year with my Spanish American game. Yeah. Um, which, man, I'm not going to lie to you. I keep thinking about just chucking that in the car. Although I don't know if we'll have quite as much space um, this year. And that's a pretty space-intensive game, you know? It, 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 it could be, yeah. Um, but who knows? We'll also get to see Mr. Mr. Reese. Yeah. Mr. Crawford will be in the building. Yeah, with his 54 millimeter uh, Vietnam game. Yep. Returning for a second hit year with his 54 millimeter Vietnam. He won best game yep. master or game last year. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Something like that. He won some sort of something. Um, but yeah, he's always coming up with cool shit. That's always good to see. Um, Greg, you're running. Zombicide, correct? Yeah, it's probably not as cool as what you and Reese are doing, but we just kind of wanted to do something that would be easy if people wanted to sit down and play and kind of pick it up. I was going to say, hell yeah, Zombicide's always a hoot, man. That's a great game. And uh, Are you bringing Team Yankee again this year? Um, I Well, we only went for one. I can. I don't know. I need to uh, – I don't even know what table I'm getting. I think Robin emailed me. I think we're doing it Saturday at yeah, noon or 12 or 12.30 to, for a block there. Oh, okay. So we have more time, yeah, or maybe I might sit on – I don't know when you're doing your game, but yours sounds interesting too. Uh, mine usually kind of tend to sit and just run when people have – the time you know what i mean yeah i know i got you. which is pretty fun it makes things a little interesting sometimes getting to games that i want to play but that's okay that's not the nice thing is usually i know enough of the people who are running games that if we really want to play in a game we can figure it out right um, well i i have scheduled uh what a tanker for friday night the 7 30 to 10 30 slot and uh, Ocean Thunder is slotted for Saturday morning, nine to noon. Hell yeah! So I am happy that we're starting at nine on Saturday. Yeah. Was it was it last year that we didn't start till like eleven or twelve or something? Uh I don't I don't remember. That, I might be confusing it with Battles and Brews also. No, I don't know. Yeah, Battles and Brews, uh, we can't really start too much earlier than about 11 o'clock because yeah, they can't be open. Yeah, I Battles and Brews because the brewery doesn't even open. Yeah. I mean, we can be in there early to get set up, yeah. but can't have customers, so to speak. Yeah. I think I am thinking of Battles and Brews then, which wouldn't surprise you. I'm not that smart. I get mixed up a lot of them. Um... So I, I was making mention earlier that except for August and September and, well, April, and April is because I've got to drive all over hell and gone to, for uh, memorial services. Um, I've got at least one gaming event every month this year. That's outstanding. Because... May 4th, first weekend of May, we've got the May, May the 4th game day at Wiley headquarters. Yep. Um, June, we've got uh, J3, my brother's gaming weekend. Yep. Uh, July, we've got Battles and Brews. And then August and September, we really don't have anything um, gaming-wise. But October, we'll have the Revenant Hunt. At yep. Wiley headquarters. 
And then November, we'll have Wiley Wargaming Weekend. Uh, December, of course, we don't really ha normally have anything because December is Christmas time. I bet that's okay. But January, I'm going to do my damned level best to make it out to Lincoln this coming January. Oh, for BillCon or whatever? I can't. Scrooge Con? Scrooge Con, right? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they they come down to Independence all the time. I think it's time with the, we uh, we at least some of us make a concerted effort to to make it up to their show. Yeah, dude, Bill's the fucking man too. So that's oh yeah, Bill, Bill's a great. He's a great cat, man. He's by all means a great dude. Um, let's see. Just going back. Um, Walkout Games is back. Uh, he he had lost his uh, he lost his Wi-Fi. So like that was been going around. That's uh, not for us too. Telemachus Telemachus says there's free room at the morgue. <laughs> free room at the morgue. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping that's a zombicide joke. Or, or you know, a place to stay. I mean, my understanding is uh, Independence Morgue is probably pretty close to Independence Square. Um, to, uh, Nordic says, uh, got one for you, McMurray. Never eat at the Haas in Gettysburg. I got food poisoning there back in the late 90s. Oh, baby. Um, last night, uh, Charles says, last night I realized my inventory spreadsheet was badly out of date, missing at least five games. So that's what I'm going to do with the rest of the night because don't have good light to paint at night. Oh. I mean, do what you got to do. I mean, you're still hobbying, right? It's it's hobby related. Charles, you should play your your Napoleonic, uh, your French versus like, not zombies. The skeletons I know are are, are are neutral, but your French graveyard game at night, not by candlelight. I feel like that didn't work too terribly well at J three. Yeah. Um, because candlelight's a little rough. But fair. I'm sure you can figure it out, Charles. There it is. Yes, you you are correct. Nord Archer was captured. My bad. Yeah. As was. I'm um, oh, sorry. So I mixed up Archer and Davis. I had it right the first time around. Archer and his like second in command were both captured at uh, Gettysburg during Pickett's charge. March Hare 22. Well, hello, March Hare. Uh, sneaking in on us like this. It says post Gettysburg OBCWB, three no. battles of Manassas was a hypothetical third bull run scenario that took takes place after Gettysburg. Nice. I do not have any of the Civil War Brigade system. Uh, I think that's an MMP production. Jeffy will be able to speak more on that. I've, I've hit Blind Swords pretty good, and I've kind of just stuck with it, to be honest with you, for my slightly crunchier than the normal uh, ACW kind of medium-sized battle system march hair. Um, I mean, I've, I've played Black, or I have, a, well, the only thing the Black Swan series so far, other than Champion Hill, is a Most Fearful Sacrifice, which is the entirety of Gettysburg. I do have that. I have yet to play the entire game yet. Um, but that will be happening this year. Uh, come hell or high water, Toddy and I are going to play that. Nice. I like it. There's War Spike. I like it. Here's Valiant. Nice. All right. Very nice. And here's Barham. Nice. I really, I like the Queen Mary, or Queen Elizabeth, so I'm going to be real honest with you. Oh, yeah. They're pretty sure. Just how absolutely bulldoggy and brutal the revenge class is. Oh, yeah. That makes them just cool. Like, all they are, they're just cheaper, shittier Queen Elizabeths. Like, that's that's why the class was made, was to be cheaper alternatives to the Queen Elizabeths. All right. But, I'll be dead. Hey, Jeffy. <clears throat> that doesn't look like Civil War, Jeffy. What you got there? That's... That is the squad of leader. 
And that that's is the, the NSLSK, isn't it? That's <coughs> that's, one Stan Stefano. Yep, and that's Karkoff. So. Oh, that's Karkoff. Gazuntai. Thank you. <clears throat> I got to catch up. Todd decided to play a turn live today, so now I'm a turn behind. Yeah, I saw uh -oh. that. Oh, that's what I meant to ask you, Jeffy. My, March Hare was just talking about. Yep, I saw that. CWB Third Manassas. Uh, yep, great system. I own all of them from top to bottom, and that's another one of those systems that I won't part with. That is Civil War Brigade system. That's MMP, isn't it? I'm sorry. That's the one where you got to write out orders, and you can't negate your orders. You have to follow them until you can break free of them or be reassigned orders. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It's definitely very, very unique. Nord, how you doing, buddy? Mikey? I have played some... Uh... You're going to hate me for saying this. Some Age of Sail games that are like that kind of. Right. Um, especially multiplayer games that can add a really cool dynamic when all of a sudden, you know. I think it's Form Line of Battle has its own like flag signaling system. Um, like that's a, a, a separate little add on to the game. Where unless your flagships are within, you know, um, six or twelve inches or whatever of each other, the only way that you can table talk is by using prearranged flag signals that are then also viewable by the enemy if they can figure out what your what your cipher is. We decided on Shepherd to run Archer's Brigade, right? Yeah, I believe so. Because Burkett, Burkett Fry got killed too, right? Yep. Yep. That's, don't worry, guys. That's not Jeffy Fry. Although, the Fry Farm will be a place in that game, as I have promised the Jeffrey. Which will be cool. Oh, man. It's not the actual Fry Farm, but, you know, because the actual Fry Farm is on the side of the Potomac that. Harry Heath is trying to get his guys over to. Mainly because he heard Jeffy makes the best cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, dude, let me tell you something. So, <laughs> I think Todd and I were online until just after 2 in the morning last night. Jesus. Dude, I went to bed, and about 20 after 4, I woke up. I had the shakes like I was catching a bug or something. And I woke up every hour on the hour till about seven thirty in the morning. Yeah, 7. dude, I'm telling you that 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 wardrobe withdrawal is real. Now I think uh, I door dashed <laughs> last night, and I or something I hear at the house. That, oh man, it messed me up so bad. No, it's it's the wardrobe withdrawal. It is. And then it'll it get you. Right I'm facts. telling you. I'm telling you, it'll get you, Jeffrey. I understand it. I do. Yeah, I'm sitting here watching hockey now. So. so here's a question for you guys. Should I take a crock pot and all the fixings for uh, corned beef and cabbage to work with me tomorrow? The hell sure. Yeah. Why not? Ew. I mean, why is because it's going to piss my boss off to no end if the whole place smells like corned beef and cabbage. But that just seems not in the spirit of the holiday. So I think I might do it anyhow. I don't like I said. I don't see why not. I mean, just the word "cabbage," fourth cabbage, just sounds nasty. Well, that's not very St. Patrick of you, Jeffrey. <laughs> I know. And I, I got some Irish in me too. So. <clears throat> that's uh, what I've heard about you. But no, I mean that that ought to be entertaining. I don't even know if I think. Well, yeah, by now it's too late to get fixings tonight. So I guess that means I'll be trying to do that while at work tomorrow. But that'll be okay. We'll figure that out. Greg, what the hell are you staring at? Ashley, you can see your face. Pop your head up. Thank you. There we go. I can see both of y'all now. All right. Uh, y'all talk to amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Uh, All right, Jeff. So how do we kill Superman? Kryptonite. What? Kryptonite. Well, what if it's crypt to daytime? True. Well, that's what the daylight savings time takes into account. Yeah, 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 there you go. Jeffy, how, are, how many buildings have you taken, buddy? 
Uh, oh, good question. Just took two more. Uh, you just took two more? Yeah, in the American movement phase, took those two there. Well, you're supposed to hit four a turn, right? Well, if you average it out, yeah, but I don't think uh, I can't see these Germans stopping these Americans. There's too many. So, of them. I mean, are you are you going to have twelve by the end of this turn? I've already got. I'm well over twelve. Oh, you're I, well over. 12. I was over twelve at the end of the last turn. Oh. Well, outstanding. Good. The Germans are bad guys, anyways, right? Uh huh. Depends on what side of the fence you were on. No, I'm pretty sure they were just bad guys. <laughs> they had good equipment, though. That's why I like playing them in the games. That's fair. I'm about to say, I think that's you one know of the I mean? times we could say these were probably bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> Those, Jeff, little 15 millimeter troops. That's why you see me bending my head down. 15 millimeter what? 15 millimeter of troops. Troops from what? Uh, for Team Yankee. Oh, okay. Jeffy, you can paint 15 millimeter troops for anything real well. We've all seen them. There's videos on your channel, buddy. No, I took them all down. You never saw no, them. No, you they're, didn't. Those were, not, <laughs> those were not the painting videos you were looking for. You better not have taken them down. They were really good. Uh, Jeffy has some pretty outstanding uh, takes. For any of you who are painting World War II in 15 or 28, for that matter, because Jeff paints his 15s like your 28s because he's a madman. Um, Jeff's got some very, 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 very good help for painting, especially with the Army Painter Speed Paints, for getting the right colors. Um, for what, I think you only have your video up for Soviets, right, Jeff? Um, my video up for what? For painting Soviet 15 millimeter infantry. Uh, I, I don't think I could find the German one, because that's yeah, the one I was yeah, trying to not, find for a buddy of mine. But, yeah, so anybody who's looking at that, interested in painting 15 millimeter World War II, Go at least check out Jeff's channel because he really is good at it. Whether he'll tell you or not. I think you like to deal with 15 millimeter more than you like to admit, right, Jeff? Yeah, I like to I like to paint in 15 millimeter. Yeah. yeah. It's just a nice scale. I mean, it's you know, for me, I like that scale overall. It is a very good scale. You can get quite a bit on the table. You can. It's really cool when you when it when it all comes together. Also, it's a, it's a good, it's a happy medium between you know twenty eights. You can see there's all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of stuff on the model. It got a lot of character, and then you get down to like two and six, and it's awesome because you can just get a ton of stuff on the table in that scale. But that kind of one to 115 millimeter scale really does a bang up job for finding that happy medium, especially when you want to put some armor on the table also. Yeah. That's, it just seems to be easier to, I'm not against the other scale size either. Actually like six millimeter is like, you guys know, I got a bunch of those tanks. I just don't really have anyone to game with. I guess I'd have to do it against myself. But. Yeah, it's hard. It's all you, you hit that one right on the head. It really is kind of the the lower end of the scales that are commonly living? played. Huh? And I don't mean lower end is in you know low end, low brow. I just mean it's the smaller end of scales. I have my Russians up here. Uh, well, you got your Russian tanks, tanks, yeah. But although I just maybe Oops, with what? with. You know, uh, Games Workshop putting out their, you know, what is it, Titanicus or whatever? Yeah. Like relaunching Epic? That's a cool box. I actually had a chance down at the, the hobby store to go to because they got the big six by four tables or four by six tables. And uh, <clears throat> the owner there had it open and he was painting on it. It's, it's actually a pretty cool setup. You can field a lot of stuff. For Warhammer, it's more of a complete battle, I think, because... 
you can bring in the Titans and all that stuff. It's all scaled down to where you could do it. But yeah, I thought it was an interesting. I mean, I just I thought it was kind of cool. Absolutely. I mean, it's 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 one of those games that they had for the longest time, you know, and it was really really popular with the people that played it. But then when they were trying to kind of you know it seemed like they were streamlining their games a lot. Yeah. They knocked it out. Um, but, you know, I mean, along with all the specialist games, I feel like it was kind of it and Battlefleet Gothic were kind of just the the last two that got the axe because, well, we're not going to keep special specialist games around just for these two. Yeah, but once they re-released it, man, it went over really well. Yeah. I think it kind of surprised them. I think they were, they were their, their analytical thing you know over it was like well all this says we should do it and they did it but i don't think they realized they were expecting that big of a response either oh yeah oh yeah it blew up yeah it blew up big time all right i'm back guys sorry about that hello chris donald's want me to uh check out uh, placement of uh, placement of logo on t-shirt. Oh, nice. So, Jeffy. Yes, What size t-shirt do you wear? Um, oh. Well, are we counting sleeves? Well, it depends on whether or not what kind of material it is. If it's something that's going to shrink, then give me a 2X. Okay. Oh. I would reiterate my question about sleeves. I think that's the most important part there is, isn't it, Jeffy? I mean, it's going to come with sleeves. It's up to him as to whether he wants to uh, make it the game them? show or not. Hey, McMurray, Panther Shadow wants to know what you're cooking. Uh, right now, it's kind of a meat sauce. And spaghetti. It's I say meat sauce. By that I mean it's it's ground beef, two pounds of ground beef, a pound of lean ground pork, brown it up, straight it off, toss in two of these giant things of uh, crushed San Marzano tomatoes, and call that the sauce, and then a uh, bunch of whole wheat spaghetti. It'll be more than enough for the next day or so at work, especially if I wind up, you know, cooking corned beef and cabbage for work tomorrow. You may as well. Yeah, they want you. That sounds really good, actually. You just have to hope that they, the rest of them save you some, that's all. Yeah, well, that's the other nice thing, though, is that, you know, it'll, it'll sit if it needs to. Which is kind of nice because that's semi important. Um, like, if I can't get back there right when it should be popping out, it's not like corned beef and cabbage is going to get ruined if it sits in a crock pot for an extra, you know, hour. Tarkov's battles before and after case flips. Nordic from Cup's King. I'm playing Operation Star. So have four and it's a star with two R's. No, it's just one. I thought you said it was star with two R's, because even no. back in World War II, they like naming stuff after their favorite strippers. They do have a town that has a star with two R's in it. But no, Operation Star. Just one R. I thought that was uh I thought that was Operation Cinnamon. Spelled with an S. Operation Brandy and Tiffany. Right. Tiffany is spelled T Y P H A N I. Sure. Oh, she lives next door. She's a lovely lady, Christopher. Not saying she's not. You said she spells her name funny. <laughs> it's That's definitely with an I. Definitely Brandy with an I also. Oh, yeah. It's okay, 
and I did have my cinnamon toast crunch. So. Yeah, see? Like I said, head on over to Jeffy's for the best cinnamon toast crunch no, that McDonald's DoorDash you ever did have. They're not solitaire, Nord. What do you call, what do you call a row of rabbits backing up? A receding hairline. Ah. I don't have to worry about that because my hair is pretty much gone. Christopher, how are the Italians looking? Uh, I have not put paint to them yet. And you're playing that game on Saturday? Yep. Why don't we paint them Friday night and show everybody how easy it is to paint those things? Because I'm running uh, what a tanker Friday night. Oh, I can paint them Friday night. You know I'm painting those. How many ships are there for the Italians over there? Um, apparently half their fucking fleet. Um, so not many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cruisers, a battleship, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen destroyers. The destroyers are going to be easy because yeah, all I'm going to do, all I'm going to do with them is give them a black wash and paint the water. Done. No, I'm about to say those Nordic, are on gray, baby. Nordic, that's not the solitaire one. Solitaire one is that's the one they made up for the Ardennes. Solitaire one. This is the this is the one that goes along with uh, Fellblau. Yeah, Chris, bring them down. I'll paint them Friday night. Show people how easy it is to paint them. All right. Spread the good word. I have I have that. Or that was uh when I right before I left Fort Knox basic training and advanced training. Um, before I left to go home and then over to Germany, I went to the Patent Museum there and bought a copy of Army Group South the Quad. And uh, don't know what I did with it. Lost it over the years, but I did pick up another copy of it. Those are fun little games. But no, this is not the uh, SPI one. It's the Compass Games one called uh, Car Call Before and After Battles or something like that. Or, no, what's it called? Car Call Battles Before and After Fall Blow. It was like a expansion to Fall Blow, the one they made. But I'm having a hanker to play freaking some OSG. Chucky's playing them and got me all rattled. Mikey's doing videos and playing stuff and talking about it. Yeah, just like uh, the, the Italians are going to be done a lot like the British destroyers. I'm just going to... The British destroyers, I'm going to be painting this, this sky gray on. <coughs> Makes sense. And then washing them. Are you going to do a lighter gray, like a stone gray on the Italians? I'm thinking about it. Slightly darker than the British. Wait, darker or lighter? Would the British, would, would the, uh, ah, shit. Yeah, I'll probably go, what I'll probably do is I will keep the, I think I'll keep the British this gray with the, uh, keep the British at this gray with the, with the, uh, dark wash on them. And then do this color gray on the Italians with the with the wash on them. Yeah, nice. I'm about to say I know that they were basically all the same color, but 
again, you tend to see pictures of the Italians and it looks brighter. It's in full Mediterranean sun. Right. Hey, uh, Nord, what was the final bid today on that um, auction? It was 450 when I left. Six hundred dollars. Wow. For what? They were auctioning the new Napoleonic game off to give Mark Brazier the money to help him out. Uh, so it's the new Isle Isle, but it was like signed and all kinds of other stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. Six hundred bucks. Pretty good. For an eighty or ninety dollar game. I'm sorry, Mikey was here too. Okay. How about to say that was Kevin Bo and those guys, wasn't it? Yep. It's Uwe, the game designer. As long as it's going to a good cause, I guess. Mark is good, folks. Yeah, I think I made my decision on Napoleonics after setting up uh, Fallen Eagles. Wonderful looking game. Looks like it was fun to play a little bit of it, but I think, I think I'm pretty much. Uh, going to narrow my Napoleonic field down to the, the Napoleonic Brigade series, which I have not played yet. And um, I'm going to keep a lot of the high stuff I got, but I think my, my main one's going to be the OSG stuff. I thought you said you were going with Commander Colors with Todd sending you. Well, yeah, once, he, once his lease runs out and he sends it to me. Fair. I, I like Commander Colors. I won't go buy that. I won't buy any of those. Not Why not? Not my type of game. I well, just I don't the only uh, well, I, I know that's that's the one where you move on a regular map, but then you play on an off map, right? No. What? Any colors? I know that's like a memoir. Forty-four. Yeah. Yeah. No, not my game. I have thought so many times. I've been in the. Uh, I've been in a game store. And I've thought about picking up MMR44 so many times. That would be, I mean, I remember seeing that and seeing guys play it years ago, and it looked kind of cool. Well, I, I, I like Command and Colors Ancients. Right. Um, and MMR44, of course, is, you know, the same basic game engine. Um, I mean, there, there are slight differences to it, but... I've thought about it. I just I haven't I haven't I haven't made a move on it. Yeah, it's it's a game I've been kind of thinking about because every once in a while you'll see it like on sale or just like a really good price. Yeah. I just need Todd to learn commanding colors and polyonics so he can teach me commanding color tricorn. And then I'll be golden. Do you have Command Color Tricorn? I do. Bring it. I mean, I still have to stick to the whole damn thing, but yeah. Uh oh. Bring it. <laughs> Fair, I guess I could always corner your brother and say, hey, teach me this. Yeah. He's got Tricorn. <laughs> He's got Napoleonics. He's got all the ancients uh, expansions. Yeah. I have ancients and I think two and three, which are the two big Roman ones. <clears throat> yeah. I think two is the one that gives you Zama epic. I don't know. I got which the, is cool. I got the two pack. I got lucky and found the two and three combined into one. Oh yeah, that's cool. So instead of paying like 40, 50 bucks for each of them, I think I paid sixty for the pair. That's cool. Nord, I mean, uh, Mikey, I have last gamble. Uh, like 
I'm all battles now. I have won the coming storm. I got some other Zucker stuff playing right here, too. One of my favorites was the old SPI quad of Waterloo. I think Todd has it now, doesn't he? I don't know. I know what he get. Because I got it in that big batch. That's, oh, the brown, yeah. that's like yeah. the brown, like, brick red one. Yeah. Yeah. Todd has that now. It's got, like, quattro bar and Yeah. That one coming storm was actually given to me for free. Oh, baby. I think I'm still okay. sitting at the only free game anybody's ever given me, like from like a manufacturer, was Joe Veltry sent me his copy or a copy of his uh, um, medieval tournament game. When I got a copy of Sons of Mars from him, way back in the day. Speaking of games, guys, head on over to uh, wiley-games.com and grab your order, your pre-order for uh, Arena, Arena of, uh, Yeah, yeah, blood. Uh, Blood, Blood of the Gladiator movies. Blood, bl or is it Blood in Urea? What a urethra? What? What well, exactly? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, head on over and uh, get your pre -co your copy of Arena of Blood. Uh, you can yeah, get Arena awesome. of Blood and the cards for thirty six bucks. And if you put in the uh, code GLADIUS, capital, all capitals, G-L-A-D-I-U-S, you get an additional 10% discount. It is supposed to ship by the end of May. Oh, damn. I didn't realize you could get 10% off of that, too. That means you're, what is that, like 32 bucks for the card and the printed rules? Yep. Yep. So. That's pretty badass. That'll have my name in it. I'll sign it for anybody who sends it to me, or brings it up to me. Probably, I'm not good at I'm not good at the mail system. The mail doesn't like my house. <laughs> yeah, the USPS has a very love hate relationship with my residents, even though I live next to a post office. Dude, what do you want? What do I want? I'll tell you what I want. What I really, really want. Tell me what you want. What you really, really wow, want. Wow, that's just made me fucking feel old. That's funny. <clears throat> what you really want is an unlimited line of credit for, you know, our hobby. No, I want an unlimited line of credit at somebody's painting service. I'm fine buying the miniatures, but I got to slow down buying them until I can get them painted. But if I get yeah. like, like say Fernando or whatever his name was like, Hey man, guess what? I'll paint all the miniatures you buy. I'd be a poor man. But I'd be a very, very happy man. <laughs> you mean sweatshop Fernando or? Yes. Sweatshop Fernando. Yes. No, 100% sweatshop in what used to be Cylon. Absolutely. Well, in all actuality, apparently he pays like three times the average wage, like for uh, semi-skilled labor. So it's kind of one of those like, is it a sweatshop? I mean, yes, it's in fucking Sri Lanka. It's a million degrees all the time. But are the people beyond fairly compensated? Yeah. So, all right, fair. Four eighty for coming storm. Man. Maybe I ought to just put that thing up for sale. Hey, yeah, goddamn, those ladies can paint too. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I'll tell you what. But yes, well, yeah. Sorry, I mean, Fernando. 
Thank you. All right. Could you just sit still, please? Is the Jeff the Brett painting way. service open for business? I have any, like, games that are, you know, available right now that I seriously want. I mean, I got those three massive squad leader boxes showed up yesterday. And it's not that, you know, I needed to have them or anything, but. What about uh, Champion Hill? Who? Champion Hill. No, no. That, that scrub little thing? Uh -uh. What? You're talking about the Champion what? Hill from Herman's uh, Lightweight series? Black Swan. No, no they don't have Black Swan Champion Hill. Like, it's it's lightweight, but it's still friggin' huge. No, Chan no, you you got it backwards, dude. Champion Hill, that one he made in that new series. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. The real white one. is the next one for Black Swan. And Vicksburg is the current release for um, the mid mid range one. Yeah. Chicksaw Bayou for Black Swan or Bl Blind Swords. Yeah. I yeah, thought no, Blind Swords three. was supposed to so, be. The Great Campaign's Vicksburg one. Um, that that's of course pre-ordered that the other day, and got two copies of the Three Days of Gettysburg pre-order. And when Herman Chickamauga game hit the Kickstarter, which I think he said towards the end of this year, I'll pre-order that. Nice, I'm sure I'll be happy about that. Champion Hill is not Black Swan. I know. It's the what it's some shields, right? It's it the, is. It's it's, it's the, the lighter light version. No Mike no Mike Mikey's saying it's Black Swan. Black Swan is a most fearful sacrifice. Chatter Union. There you go, Mikey. Thanks. Yeah, I don't I, I mean people played that when it first popped, but I'm not I don't know. I, I don't know if that was too light of a game. I mean, Herman, his blind swords in the Black Swan are people are going to eat those Black Swan games up like crazy because it's such a good system, and blind sword for sure because it's just a mediary, uh, a medium system that a lot of oh there we go gold yay finally <clears throat> Panther Shadow where the fuck do you live that it's going to cost fifty five dollars to deliver. That was a PDF. Is it just a rule set? Hmm? Isn't it just a rule set? Yeah, cards also. Oh. oh, man. Do you have two copies of Into the Woods? You can see them. Stack right on top of each other right there beside Uncle Bobby. Bottom of the world for everything. Got to buy it all. Yeah, unfortunately, they have yet to find a good... Uh, a, a good distributor for... Uh, East Asia, Western Pacific, Australia area. Hey guys, we're gonna have to call tonight. Ashley's got to get up at four thirty and work. Boo! Yeah. Boo! Hey, it got me to get up there, so hush. Yeah. What are you doing, Ashley? Where are you working at? I work at Cargill. Oh, it's Cargill. <coughs> you get to stand there and check trucks in and out yeah. all day. Well, I did some stuff like that. Well, at least to load them with a work with them. Oh, thank so, you, Andrew and Mike. It was nice hanging out with you guys. We'll see you in a couple days, Chris. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, Murray. Jeff, you're you're not making it. You said no. Uh -uh. Here. This okay. Is well, what? Oh, let me show. Them. She was working. This is a 35 Cadillac. There you go. Sweet. She's been working on that. Yeah. 
Just something different. Uh. All right, everybody. We're going to call tonight. See you. Right. See you. At the hotel room, sir. We'll see yep. you out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the other one, Jeff. The other one in Shattered Union is uh, Cross Keys in Port Republic. That's right up by you. Has that been released yet? Yeah. It, I think it came out in, at the end of last year, didn't it? It was supposed to. No, I don't. Um, no. Port, I don't think it's been released yet. I mean, if it is, it's very recent. Yeah, it's up for sale. Yeah, it's out. Okay. Um, yeah, it's out, but that's kind of, that would be kind of cool. So apparently it is. You should play one of those. You should get one of those and play it. Well, Let so me. what it is, apparently I was thinking about that because I'm reading here is that the idea is it uses the black swan system with smaller scale battles. So it uses the simplified system from. A most fearful sacrifice with the smaller scale engagements yeah. of blind swords. Well, I mean, all three of those series follow a similar path. Yeah. And they're fixing to do with great battles of the American Civil War now. They're going to put out their easy, easy play rules. Oh, man. We know funny I'm, I'm to... not a proponent of that, but here I am playing ASL's ASL starter kit as opposed to ASL. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to say, don't say that shit to Stigler. Boy, howdy. <laughs> Talk to me, man. There's so much great battles, the American Civil War stuff that's going to be coming out. Those GBACW guys are like fucking Gandalf standing in front of their gate there. Thou shalt not pass. Um, I know that there's people that are, you know, the fact that they tackled the wilderness tells you that somewhere down the road they're going to tackle these other ones. The problem they say they're having with uh, the seven days is um, finding the good orders of battle because it was so early in the war. Yeah. Oh, man, this does seem... Oh, Mike, I, I must have missed that one completely, Mikey. I need to go back to backtrack and see that one because I've not even seen... I haven't even been to BGG and looked at it, so... At what? I think it's because Champions Hill... I don't know. I mean, I guess Champions Hill was a good one to start a new system with because there's not really that much going on in it. But that battle just doesn't, you know... Um, I don't think anything tactical out there outside of China gets my call. But uh, operational stuff. Out. Come on. Did you just say outside of Chicago? Shiloh. Oh. I thought you said outside of Chicago. Just I, mean, I like to see GBACW tackle Franklin. Maybe Spring Hill. Um, there's a few battles out there in the West that could take you know? I don't know. I keep wondering if you pull off of Fort Donaldson. And GBACW that would be worthwhile. That'd be cool. What's the pair of them for Donaldson, and what's the other one? And Fort McHenry. Yeah. Nice there you smile. go. There you go. Oh. Well. Yeah, that could be. I'd be real interested in that. I might have to look at that and maybe order. That's from Tiny Battles, right? Let's see here. Tiny Battles Publishing. Chris, how's the painting come along, buddy? Um, I got uh, the dido done. Nice. Yeah, Conquering the Valley is out. It's ooh, it's fifty five bucks though. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Wait, the Devils to pay is from Tiny Battles. That's Blind Swords, isn't it? Jeff. Jeff is not there. Oh, Jeff left. Well, I mean, he's coming back. Oh, okay. I didn't realize Tiny Battle Publishing put out The Devils to Pay. That's the day one of Gettysburg game in the 
um, Flying Sword series. I'm a big fan of Long Street Attacks, which is the day two down at uh, the Round Tops and um, Sickles, so down on the far down on the Union left on the south end of the battlefield. <coughs> <clears throat> Conquering the Valley, yeah. Todd and I need to get back to playing freaking great campaigns. Or else I'm going to end up doing it on my own. I don't want to do that. I need too much fun doing it with him. I didn't realize uh, Tiny Battles published um, The Devil's to Pay, Jeff. The what? Uh, the Devil's to Pay, the first day. Um, GBAC or uh, Blind Swords game. Oh, yeah. I never, saw, I never got my hands on that one. I do not have it either. The day when I play the entirety of Long Street Attacks, I'll probably pick that up next because it's a pretty cool. I think that mainly has to do with if you can find one. It's still in print at Tiny Battles. Is it really? You can buy it right now. I have this thing here that I, I want to. It's old, but I want to. I want to play it. What's that? This. Hang on. I can't read what it says. Oh, McPherson's, McPherson's Ridge. Ridge. Yeah. That'd be cool. Who, who published that? Um, Task Force Games. Oh boy. Oh, no, I, I don't think I got off my couch too much today. Nord, uh, Long Street Attacks is quite fun. There's a lot of really good scenarios in there, um, including some really good starters for blind swords that are not necessarily in other games. Like, there's not having playing through Thunder in the Ozarks, Thunder at Dawn, and a couple of the blind sword games. Long Street Attacks certainly has the best intro scenarios that I've found in that system and they're very good and you can play the full cycles I'm really afraid to do that now Jeff because what if Dan the man loses like I tend to be pretty good at attacking in games and that would make me beat up you are Dan and I'm not really excited about that idea. You are aggressive. <sighs> well, you got to be aggressive. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. I do, Mike. I got to calm down and go to sleep. Plus, I'm not shouting over the uh, fan in my kitchen. I'm fixing to hit it, too. It's already... Ah. Nord, I do, which also makes really cool designing scenarios for stuff like that. Also, well, I hope you pull off this Falling Waters game successfully. I really do. I will. What about terrain and stuff? So that's the nice thing is that the terrain is going to be rather simple. Yeah, it's just um, I didn't think there was a train there. No, no, yeah. no, choo choos. I think the choo choo no, ran through falling waters, didn't it, Jeff? Yeah, runs right, matter of fact, runs right down just to, over here across the interstate for me against the um, river. Yeah, that's how Jeffy gets to work every day. He jumps on the choo choo. Uh, it doesn't run through us here, it's, but it's between us and the river. Yeah. Um, I don't know so, if it was there during the Civil War, but. The choo choo, like my, my game won't extend. We have, we have Martinsburg here. Martinsburg was a hub in the valley, so. Yeah, I mean, again, so my my game will not cover even, you know, the opposite side of the river from you guys. Um, the, it won't extend that far to the east. Um, Stony Hill is awesome, Lord. I like that area. <clears throat> but there's, there, it looks like there's a water, or there's a road that was running directly 
east west towards falling waters though and that's what i'm kind of yeah. thinking is going to be and that does not exist anymore oh really no we have no crossings you have to go up through hagerstown on the interstate or on 11. Huh. we well, yeah, i mean even then it was just a pontoon but is there still a little town of bayer virginia the or is that, bear or is like that just a bear bear no bear like bayer aspirin or is that just a well, I'm not going to sit here and say no, but it doesn't ring a bell with me. Okay, I think the labels on this map are farms. Um, oh, bear, yeah, bear farm, okay. But so it looks like there was a Donnelly farm, and that's right around where Harry Heath kind of assembled a line. And then, um, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I literally just drive, go out my door here, go across over by Walmart, and go north maybe maybe a mile, half a mile, and I'm in the area of the Ford where the Ford crossed over. Well, Falling Waters Church is up there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. But, yeah, so it should be it should be pretty interesting. There, the, the one thing I'm kind of iffy on is there should be some pretty heavy, like, uh, not mountains, but some pretty hilly terrain. It looks like in that inside of that bend on the Potomac on the west or on the east side. Yeah. Everything on the east side up in this area is just rolling hills. Farm yeah. Stuff like that. It does look, however, that I know that now it's not super duper flooded or I'm sorry, wooded, okay. but it looked like at the time it was mostly cleared. Um, other than, you know, right along the river and, so that should, again, make that a little bit easier in terms of gaming it because I'm not going to have to worry about putting big chunks of uh, woods out everywhere. I don't know if I'm going to do full, you know, uh, felt and clump foliage woods or if I'm going to have... Uh, you know, areas with a couple of trees in them, but either way, it should be, should be good. should be just fine. No biggie. All right, well, chaps, I'm going to bed. I'm fixing to be going on my ass off, so. Yeah, McMurray needs to be doing the same thing, guys. I okay. do. See you. Take care, guys. Thanks for dropping in. Yep. Good night, Mr. Chris. Good night, everybody. Good to talk Take to care. everybody. And see everybody. Let's check the chat one more time in case people are making fun of me again. Didn't look like. No, we're good to go. Um, but all right, guys, we'll talk to you later. Take care, McBurry. And then there was one. I'm still here. Um, Giveaway on Mike's channel. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, go on over to uh, Mike's channel and uh, take a look at his what he's offering. Um, I have not yet gone to go look at it. I need to. Uh, so I can, you know, partake. Maybe I'll win something. Maybe I won't. Who knows? Um, so <clears throat> I've got, I'm, I just got a little bit more I want to get painted on tonight. I've got quite a bit done. Um, like I said, I'm going to go real easy with the, uh, with, with the, the, the destroyers. I'm just going to keep them this color and uh, basically just, black wash them, uh, do a null oil wash, and then uh, hit the bases with the blue. Um, the As far as uh, cruisers, uh, I'm going to do basically the same thing as keep them on that dark gray, but I, I, I have put, uh, I have gotten the uh, uh, the decks, decks on there. So.
So, yeah, um, not too much to do. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> but, yeah, I think uh, tonight's been productive. We've been going for just about two hours and ten minutes. A little later start than normal, but that's okay. Um, it's uh, 10.30 local central time. Hope everybody's having a good weekend so far. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna just finish this one cruiser up, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a night. Also, um, but yeah, thanks for thanks for everybody hopping on. I I do truly appreciate it, guys. Um, you guys really, honestly, you guys are the best. Um, I I don't I don't want to be like you know anybody you know other places of, oh I love you guys no I seriously think that you know y'all are the best you know I I set this up you know ten minutes before we started if that I think I might have even known been five minutes. And uh, here y'all are, still six of you, uh, watching the show. Uh, and it's just, you know, the first 45 minutes was me uh, just talking about random ass shit. Um, and then uh, Ashley and Greg popped on, and then Jeffy, or uh, Murray popped on, and then Jeffy came on, so, you know. Um, Charles says, I got the game sounded like three, four, or five different ways. That way I can be sure I haven't uh, forgotten something that everything is adding up multiple times correctly. Outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, thanks for streaming. I love listening to you guys talk. Well, Richard, I you know... I do appreciate that. And sometimes we talk about we talk about cool stuff. Sometimes we just talk about just inane bullshit. Um, but I mean it's the I mean, you never know what you're gonna get when you pop up pop in and watch, that's for sure. Um so uh my hair, man, my hair is kicking like Bruce Lee. Look at this. Jesus. Um <clears throat> you know, so I'm I'm glad y'all y'all enjoy coming and sitting and watching us. Um Charles says like um uh, Maurice says I enjoy the banter on what otherwise would be a boring evening. Charles's eyes are blurring. Panther says, I'm here to learn and have fun, and then Andrew Mike chirps up and the rest is history. There you go. There you go. Uh, Charles, I have to be here because you and Walmart are the ones that got me into miniatures two years and two and a half months ago. Oh, you know, Walmart. Yeah, Walmart, not Walmart. Walmart, Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, after I get these, what, what's coming up for me, uh, uh Gaming wise, is after I get all of these ships painted and we're done with March to Victory next week, I've got to seriously hop onto these. Uh, uh, I got to hop onto these um, these Confederates. I need to get them painted up. Uh, I need to make sure I got enough painted up for Shiloh at least, um, and then. Uh, I'm probably going to end up doing uh, some uh, Confederates also, just so I can have those as well. I told him because I'm here to bullshit, shovel shit, and tell tall, tell tall tales. Well, isn't that what we're all here for? Um, and actually, it's it's one thing about my gaming is I like to be able 
to tell the stories. You know, sit back and, and say, you know, remember, remember that one game. Um, that that's what I that's what I like about the game, the type of games that I play, and the type of games that uh, that the rest of these the rest of the guys that I, that I hang out with. We we play games for that that can tell a story, you know, because you don't you don't remember, you know, the the thirteen different tournament games that you've played. Now I remember a couple of tournament games that I played before, but that's because I was playing with my buddy. Well, he wasn't my buddy at the time, Russell. We just met each other at a game tournament. And we always ended up sucking so bad at playing the games that we ended up, you know, facing off against one another regularly. And we both played Blood, Blood Angel style armies, uh, Warhammer 40K 4th edition. And by the end of the game, we were just put literally like, you know, someone pushing all their chips in. We would push all of our, uh, our, uh, death company miniatures into a heap and we'd start rolling dice and we'd start picking out the deads, you know, that's how they ended up. So I remember that, but I can't tell you any of the other tournament games I ever played in because there, there wasn't a story to it. Um, but I mean, there, there are still times, that, there are still games that I remember from 10, 15 years ago at, uh, you know, at, at J3. Um, the, there is, uh, oh, what, one of the games that we played, uh, our buddy James brought a, uh, it was a homebrew set of rules, but it was the, uh, Xenomorphs from Alien versus the, the Colonial Marines. And it was memorable, not so much by the rules, but the table he laid out, it was we turned off all the lights. It was played at night. And keeping in mind that, you know, this was in July. And here in July in central, west central Illinois, it doesn't get dark until like 10 o'clock. So we didn't start playing until like 10, 30, 11 o'clock uh, Saturday night. And But he had a black light set up, a couple of black lights set up. And uh, all of the, uh, the table was... You know, foam kind of painted in black with glow in the dark uh, paint to highlight certain stuff. And oh, it was, it was just, and he had the uh, one of those yellow uh, swirly lights, like on top of uh, forklifts and shit. Um, so anytime a, uh, a xenomorph attack happened, he would flick that thing on. And oh man, it was just you know stuff like that. Uh, just is really, really good. Uh, I have a doctorate in bullshitting. Nice. Nice. Well, I've got my BS. Um, I had thought, which, you know, obviously stands for bullshit. Uh, I had thought about going for an MS, uh, which is more of the same. And then, uh, and then it's uh, a PhD, which you know, stands for piled higher and deeper. Uh, it wasn't a strobe, Telemachus. It was actually one of the, the you know, you got the bulb here and the revolving reflector, you know, the old style, uh, the old style um, emergency lights like you saw at, uh, if you ever remember the, the TV show, um, was it Police Squad with Leslie Nielsen? Um, you had one of those on, on, you know, it was, you were looking at it, it was on, supposed to be on top of the car and you're looking behind it, but always, you know, turned into like a go-kart or someone pushing it. Uh, it was driving through like an office or driving through, uh, a grocery store. Yeah. One of those anyway. So, well, I think I got done what I'm going to get done tonight. Um, like I said, I think I did a pretty, I got a pretty good amount done. I just need to get the, some touch-ups on the rest of these cruisers, get the water painted on them, and we're going to call them good. 
Uh, I'm not worried, you know, worry about doing camouflage on them. I did camouflage on uh, the battleships and the carrier. I'm not going to worry about it on the cruisers. And then, uh, then I got to do the same thing with the uh, destroyers. Now, everybody heard. Y'all heard that McMurray was going to paint my Italians for me Friday night. So I'm going to take them to him. Fingers crossed. He does them for me. 329, all balanced. Spreadsheet mostly all updated. Yay. All right, Charles. Way to go, buddy. Way to go. I'm glad we could keep you company while you got that done. So, all righty, guys. Again, thanks for uh, hopping on. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I know it was a, a short notice type of thing, but uh, you guys are great. I do truly appreciate it. So, um, We'll see you uh, on Wednesday. I, I am going to have the normal show on Wednesday. Uh, so be on the lookout. We will be, I, I'll make sure to get it uh, posted early enough on Wednesday. So y'all know it's there. Um, I will, and it's going to be eight o'clock. You know, it'll be the regular start time. So um, as always, until next time. We'll see you on the flip side.